sisters. I'm Pastor Jerome Bell, uh, bringing greetings from Westminster Presbyterian Church here in the beautiful city of Birmingham. It is a joy to have you tuning in with us this year in our worship service today. You could have tuned in to any worship service across the world, but you're here with us today. So for that, we say thank you. From our beloved Westminster family, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are a wonderful group of people. I'm so pleased to be a pastor. I'm excited for how you've been praying for us, caring for us, reaching out with your phone calls, messages, texts, not just to me, but to other people as well within the church family. For that, I say thank you because of your words of encouragement. You let us know what it really means to be the church. We're in a church building right now. It's empty. The reality is the church is you. It's everybody uh, loving on each body, uh, reaching out to one another, uh, heart, mind, and soul, keeping each other lifted up in prayer. For that, I thank you for being the church, taking your time out to help those in need, going by their houses, uh, taking uh, supplies and food. You are the church. I thank you for being the church. And today, as we continue in our worship service today, we'll uh, spend time reflecting on our great God together on this past Thursday. The Church Universal celebrated the ascension of Jesus Christ. Forty days after the resurrection, Jesus ascended back to heaven. That's what I'll be sharing from later on in the worship service from Acts chapter uh, 1. Turn your Bibles there. But join us as we continue in a time of worship together. I love you. Praise God for our time together. Hallelujah. Amen. As we continue in worship, I ask you to join me and lifting our hearts together in prayer to our great God. Father, we do thank you for blessing us with another day to be alive and to be able to join together virtually in worship. God, we know that uh, our times are in your hands. It's because of you that we live and move and have our being. We thank you, God, for allowing us this sacred space together to be able to lift our voices to you in thanksgiving and praise. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness to us. We thank you, God, for how you have watched over us and protected for us and provided for us. We thank you, God, for the blessed privilege of being called your sons and daughters. We know, God, that this is not of our own doing, but it's because of your goodness and your grace and your faithfulness towards us that you brought us into the family. And God, we thank you for that. Let us not, oh God, take for granted the gift of life and all the provisions you provide for us each and every day. Father, I lift up our church family before you even now, Father. Uh, I pray, God, that you will continually meet all of their needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, God, for meeting them physically, uh, touching us, God, in our places where we are hurting physically, sickness and bodies. We thank you for healing. God, for uh, the emotional stresses that we uh, in, in, encounter even in this time, oh God, of separation. God, thank you for healing our hearts as we cast all of our cares upon you, knowing, God, that you care for us. Thank you, God, for the provision of church family. Thank you for the provision of family. Knowing that we are connected together makes a difference. Knowing that 
um, through a phone call, a card, or email, God, that we are loved and cared for. Thank you, God, for being connected. For it's a reminder of your love, how you reach down and touch us. God, with that same love, we're able to touch others. Thank you, God, for being able to continue to minister to each other out of the spirit of love. And I pray, Father, that that same love, God, uh, will be spread among uh, the world. We pray for those in leadership in our state, our city, and local municipalities, God, in our nation. We pray that a spirit of love, not division and hatred, will overcome and take over the minds of those who are in leadership. God, remove selfishness and infuse a sense of love that places the other instead of self. Help us, oh God, to be lovers of one another through our actions and to carry out the great mission of Jesus Christ. And we pray now as our Lord and Savior has taught us to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, my. 
I should turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. <clears throat> the Word of God reads, So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not that you know the times or dates the Lord has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed and white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. I want to speak from, uh, share from this topic. I must go to the Father. I must go to the Father. After Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to over 500 believers according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He appeared in his resurrected body of flesh. He walked among the believers and those in that day 40 days. And then he ascended back to the Father. Only Luke records the ascension of Jesus Christ. He makes mention in the end of his gospel on Luke 24, verses 50 to 53. And here in Acts chapter 1, Luke points out that the ascension of Jesus Christ is essential. As the church so had in its church history, those 40 days after the resurrection, which was marked on this past Thursday, the church celebrates the Ascension Day of Jesus Christ. Luke kept in uh, his sacred words and his gospel, as well as his letter, the book, uh, the book of Acts of the Apostles, this importance of the Ascension of Jesus Christ. Why is it important? Why, why do not the other gospel writers mention the ascension? Well, I don't know. But I do know Luke mentions it. And he mentions it twice in his gospel letter as well as in the Acts of the Apostles. And there's allusions made to it in other letters by other New Testament writers. This is an important doctrine for us as believers because it is part of Jesus' words where he said that he will be crucified, that he will die and be resurrected from the dead, and he will ascend to the Father and return. It's, it's part of our core fabric of what we believe based on what Jesus said and what he did while on earth. And we see in the ascension part of God's unfolding plan. We even hear in Jesus' words in John's gospel that he promised that he would go to the Father to send a, according to John 14, another counselor, another help, an advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to come for empowering the believers, to fill their lives with his very presence. But that followed the ascension, where Jesus ascended back to the Father. His very attitude and mindset was, I must go 
to the Father. He said it over and over again to the believers in various ways that he must go to the Father first and then the Spirit, God without skin, will come and dwell within mankind. And this day, Ascension Day, the day when Jesus, uh, as we see the picture described in Acts chapter 1, the day in which he, if you will, took a uh, escalator of clouds and gradually ascended back into glory out of the sights of his disciples. As he ascended back to the Father for a purpose, the scriptures allude to in various ways. I'm not going to deal with Acts chapter 1. Normally I'll just deal with the text, but I want to emphasize this doctrine, so I'm going to look at some other scripture passages, so get your pen and uh, turn there with your, with your Bible. But hey, you have the opportunity to even press pause and pick up the verses as I go through them. But I want to look at uh, this idea, this attitude of Jesus going back to the Father for what purpose? Why did he? Why is he emphasizing, I must go to the Father? Why did Jesus uh, make this ascension? Why is it so important, him going back to the Father? Well, first, Jesus had to go back to the Father to present his resurrected body of flesh. He had to present his resurrected body of flesh. Jesus came born of a Virgin Mary, wrapped in flesh, and lived a sinless life, went to the cross and died in the flesh. He was laid in a tomb Friday, Saturday, but early Sunday morning. He got up in a resurrected body of flesh. And Jesus, when he ascends back to the Father, he presents his resurrected body of flesh. He presents his body as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of all who put their faith in Jesus Christ. He presents his body, his resurrected body of flesh, as a perfect sacrifice for all sins. Hebrews chapter 9. Read these words. Verse 11, when Christ came as high priest of good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of creation. He did not enter by the blood of goats and calves. He entered, listen to this, the most holy place once for all by his own blood having obtained eternal redemption. The holy place, that speaks of the heavenly tabernacle. For the earthly tabernacle was made to replicate what was in heaven, the tabernacle, the most holy place in heaven. We know in reading the Old Testament that the tabernacle had a place called the Holy of Holies. And that was the only place where the priest could enter in and to offer sacrifices for the believers for the atoning of their sins. Here Jesus, the high priest, enters the most holy place, which is heaven's tabernacle, the place of heaven's altar. And just as decades and years and years of sacrifices took place on earth, offering sheep, goats and bulls and lambs and turtle doves. Here, the once and for all final sacrifice, who John said, behold, the Lamb of God, Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, without spot or blemish, no sin in him, no imperfection, he died as a sacrifice for my sins, 
for your sins. For those of the world who will receive him by faith, he died. He gave his life as a perfect sacrifice to pay our sin debt. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And the perfect blood of Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins. So Jesus comes to heaven with a body, a resurrected body that bore the scars of his death. His body still with the piercings in his hands, the piercings in his feet, in his side, the, those marks that bore that he paid the price and he goes to heaven's altar and presents his body to the Father. It's done. The price has been fully paid. Here is the, the scars that give sign and testimony of the finished work that I did in sacrificing my life for sinful man. So Jesus had to go to the Father to present his resurrected body of flesh. But also Jesus had to go to uh, the Father to present his resurrected body of flesh as a perfect uh, sacrifice for all, but also he presented his uh, resurrected body of flesh as a perfect substitute for Adam. Where do you get that from? Well, let's turn again in Scripture. Hebrews chapter 9. I want you to get this first before we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 24. Jesus says that now he appeared for us uh, in God's presence. He appeared for us in God's presence. How do he appear for us in God's presence? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 through 49, we, we read Paul's uh, talk of Jesus in this term in comparison to the first Adam. And he spoke of Christ being the second Adam. Hear these words, Hebrews chapter 15, verse 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, speaking of Christ, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of dust of the earth, that's Adam. And the second man from heaven, that's Jesus. As was the earthly man, so are those who are in the earth. As is the man from heaven, so are also those who are of heaven. And just as we are born in the likeness of earthly man, Adam, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven, Jesus Christ. There's this identification that Jesus has with you and with me. We, yes, are in flesh. What separates us from Jesus is this. We have a sin-marred and scarred flesh. Jesus came in flesh, born of a virgin Mary, but lived a sinless life, conceived of the Holy Ghost, fully God, fully man, sinless. He can identify with us in the struggles of our flesh, just as the first Adam struggled and succumbed to sin. Jesus struggled and overcame sin. And the identification we have with Christ and that when he came and, and he went back to the Father, he took a resurrected body of flesh, a body like yours and mine. He, he took it back as a perfect substitute for Adam. Where the first Adam failed, the second Adam prevailed. 
where the first Adam messed up, the second Adam fixed it up for you and for me. It's through his presentation of his resurrected body, a flesh back to heaven, you and I have a new position in God. Jesus had to go back to the Father to present his resurrected body of flesh. But secondly, Jesus had to go to the, back to the Father to send the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 16 and verse 26 emphasize when Jesus said to his disciples before his death, I will go to the Father and I will ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit, to send another comforter, another counselor to be with you, to teach you everything that you uh, have heard of me, to bring it back to your remembrance. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will come and be with you. So Jesus said, I must go first, though, in order for God, the Spirit, to come and to fill you. And we hear these words again when Jesus speaks in Acts chapter 1, after his resurrection, he's speaking to his disciples and giving them words of encouragement, letting them know that they must go to Jerusalem and wait for that day when they will receive power so they can be, uh, receive the Holy Spirit and be witnesses for him. For the Holy Spirit was going to come in and empower them to be witnesses, to share the good news, to share the testimony of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he came born of the Virgin Mary, lived a sinless life, went to the cross and died, and was resurrected and ascended back to the Father and is coming back again. They were to be witnesses of that great story and how God had radically transformed and changed their lives. That was going to be enabled by the sending of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that will live within them and guide them. We're going to spend more time next week talking about this because that's the, the, our celebration of Pentecost Sunday where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, when he comes, when uh, the Spirit comes, he comes for a purpose that is to equip us for the work of ministry. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, speaks in these terms. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But to each of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Verse 8 says this. This is why it says, when... He ascended on high. He led captive in his train and gave gifts to men. It goes on to say in verse 9, What does he ascended means except that he also descended to the lower earthly region? He who descended is the very one, speaking of Christ, who ascended higher than all the heavens, his ascension, in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some, verse 11, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For what purpose, verse 12 says this, to prepare God's people for the work of service. God gives you and I, by the work of the Holy Spirit, gifts. For what purpose? To prepare, to equip God's people for service. So that the body of Christ may be built up. So you got a gift, I got a gift, all God's children got gifts. Because of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And he gives those gifts so that we can help build each other up. The way we grow in the faith is being connected to a body of believers. And a body of believers who actively allow the Spirit of God to enable them to use the gifts he's given. Everybody has at least one gift. Some may have multiple gifts, but everybody got one. Say everybody got one, I got one, you got one. All God's children has a gift. Because of the Holy Spirit that's resident inside of us, he gives us gifts so that we can use it 
to help build the body of Christ, to strengthen each other, to encourage each other, to teach each other, to bring us each other to a place of maturity in Christ. The church is not to be a place of isolation, but a place where we connect with each other. I know in this season where we are physically apart, but we can still encourage and build each other through our phone calls. And I've received some letters and cards that are encouraging to my spirit. It builds me up. So you can still reach out and share and continue in your ministry of building other brothers and sisters in the faith. God has given us tools like uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, use them for God's glory and good. good. Reach out through your phone calls and your text messages, emails. Just allow God to, to use you to help build each other up under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So I great God, I, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he had to go to the Father also to send us the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to build the body of Christ. Finally, Jesus uh, had to go to the Father to intercede on our behalf. He had to go to the Father to intercede on our behalf. Jesus being the second Adam, he was raised again, as I said, in his glorified body of flesh. And just the way that we saw him in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, as he, uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, he ascended, verse 11 says, the way we saw him going to heaven, he's coming back again. The way we saw him going to heaven, he's coming back again. Jesus, in the flesh, raised in the body of flesh, redeemed body of flesh, a sinless body of flesh, now in his celestial body of flesh in heaven, he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 34. And he's making intercession for us, for you, for me. In his resurrected body of flesh, the second Adam, the one who identifies with us at all points, in our struggles, in the midst of our pain, he understands. Because he walked in flesh but did not succumb to the sinfulness of flesh. And so here he is, sitting at the right hand of majesty on high, with flesh connected to me and you, to you and I. We, we, we have that connection and kinship for the writer of Hebrews, says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, we have a high priest who can understand all of our struggles. He can empathize with all of the trials and struggles we go through emotionally, physically, mentally, while here on earth. But he, in the midst of all those struggles and temptations, did not sin. He did not succumb. So we have this great advocate, this intercessor, on the right hand of God the Father praying for us, talking to God about you talking to God about me. I, I can imagine it be somewhat something reminiscent to what Jesus said to Peter when he spoke to Peter in uh, Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 22. Jesus said to Peter, listen, Satan desires to sift you as sweet, but I have prayed for you. Beloved, the devil also has the same intent to take us out, sift us a squeak, to, to just derail us through a, 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 a falling away, that we're not following faithfully the will of God, that our testimony becomes tainted. But Jesus is on the right hand of God the Father praying for us, interceding for us on our behalf. He had to go back to the Father to take that position, the position of authority and power, sitting on the right hand of God the Father on our behalf, so that when he sends the Spirit into our lives, we now have the Spirit within and the Son beside the Father talking to him about us. God the Son is speaking to God the Father about us in our struggle. He said, God, help them. Send a little power, send some covering, watch over them, provide for them, meet their needs according to 
all that is in glory, God, they need your help right now. I see a circumstance. God, move this, move that. Bring it all together for their good and for your glory, oh God. And I praise God that our Lord and Savior, he went up. But he's coming back again. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's coming back again. And we can stand sure that just as our Lord and Savior uh, sent, ascended into heaven, one day the trump's going to blow and he's coming back again. Hallelujah. For you and for me. And beloved, I want you to share with others who may not know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in fact, if you're watching this for the first time and you don't know him as Lord and Savior, I want you to pause right now. Say, God, come into my heart. I believe that you are the Savior of the world. I believe that you came to transform my life, that you went to the cross and you died on the cross to pay my sin debt, and that you rose from the dead with all power, that you're sent to, the, to God on high, and you're coming back again. Today I commit my life to you. If that's you, I want you to be so bold, reach out to us so that we can pray for you. You can look on our page and you'll see our, our address. You can send us a message uh, on YouTube or Facebook, but share if you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the day for you where you can rise up in the news of life. God bless you. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of coming together in your uh, time of worship, in your presence. God, we pray that as we uh, spend time at home, allow your spirit, O oh God, to fill us afresh. Strengthen our hearts. Allow us to be a people who are instruments of your love, your care, and compassion through all of our resources. Use them, God, for your glory. That you will strengthen each believer, reach out to those who do not know your Lord and Savior, and draw them into the family. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, to our great God be glory, dominion, honor, and praise. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.